Welcome to another live stream. You've got to alkalinize. We have to alkalinize. So today I'm going to talk to you about alkalinizing your diet and how it could really play a key role, a fundamental role in how, the, how your body is healing, how your body's repairing, how your body is certainly restoring. There are a lot of factors that drive our body to more of an acidic state on one end and on a catabolic state on the other hand. I'll explain. But today, I want to drive home a couple of key points that our lifestyles, the way we live, the distress that we're under, then the way we eat, and then even our spirit man, our emotions, our psyche, all play into this, believe it or not. It all plays into this. So that if we can begin to change and tweak you, not make you this perfect you know, eating organic, biodynamic type foods every single meal. But if we can begin to just change some of your thinking about how you eat, I believe that we can put you more of in a reparative state, more in a serotonin producing state, more in a DHEA balancing state, I'll explain, as opposed to either a catabolic or an acidic state, which is deficient which negates repair, works against repair in your body, and also tends you to more of a cortisol, adrenaline dominant state, which is bad. We don't want you there. That's not what we want you. When you are moving more to a cortisol, adrenaline driven state, that is more of a catabolic breakdown, diminishing functionality um, in the body. So without further ado, we're going to get into this, and I'll begin to explain some things, but before we do that, just a teaching that I've been kind of going over the last couple of days on the daily radio broadcast, kind of just want to encourage you a little bit later, I just want to give you a little sneak preview about a pretty amazing man of God that we never hear a whole lot about, but Eleazar in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 24 specifically, and Eleazar was commissioned by Abraham, and Abraham makes him swear an oath to him that he will engage, they'll put together a plan, they'll engage in a plan, and how important it is for you and I to have a plan in our life, but also to not only just have a plan, but is it a God-ordained plan? Am I inviting God into the plan? And then ultimately, the execution of the plan, just listen to this. Then, a, then the man, Eleazar, bowed down and worshiped the Lord. This is chapter 24, I believe, yes, 20, uh, verse 26 saying, praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, now see, he, he kind of has this plan, he puts together this plan to do what? To go find a husband, or excuse me, a wife for Isaac, Abraham's son. This was critically important. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The Lord has led me on the way. Oswald Chambers had an interesting writing about this. He basically said that we need to become so in tune and so in touch and so intact with our Heavenly Father that we are led, in essence, just led. Not always asking God, 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 but he was led. Eleazar was led by God, led by the Spirit of God. And if we could get to that point, our lives would be so much simpler. I'll give you a few uh, insights, hopefully, if we have time, a little bit later. Let's get into it. Why do I need to, what is there truth to this? Because right now, there are so many different diets. You know, you are Mediterranean, I love Mediterranean style eating. I do. But we have now, we have, um, you know, the Paleolithic diet. And we have folks talking about, well, okay, you absolutely no gluten. And you know my feelings about gluten and wheat. I have just have live streams. We've discussed that. But what I want to specifically say today, I don't know that this is just about a certain type of a diet. This is a way and a manner of eating that kind of puts your body in a position so that it can take better care of itself, so that it can heal so that it can repair and restore. So let's go right to the board. <clears throat> Alkalinization, why is it key? Let, let me explain to you, first of all, what I want to do, what I'm, what I'm saying, I want to alkalinize you, or I need you to alkalinize your diet. 
first of all, this is a pH um, measurement that you will take. And you can do this. Typically, we have pH hydrion paper. It's very inexpensive. I don't know, thirteen, fourteen dollars a tape. It lasts you for months. And all you do is in the morning after six hours of rest, at a minimum five to six hours that you've been sleeping during the course of the night. So if you go to bed and you wake up at five in the morning for work or whatever, and you get up to pass urine you would run a urine stream through this pH paper, literally, and then immediately there's a, a kind of a, a little bit of a direction tab on the other side of the pH hydrion paper that is just a color gradient and that gives you what the pH is. So back in chemistry and so on, you would, you know, in biochemistry and in organic labs, you would have to test the pHs of products that you would make. So what we're doing here is testing the pH of the body. Unfortunately, many people today use saliva as a source. They do it multiple times a day. That's, I, I believe, totally incorrect. I know it's incorrect. They will do urine streams multiple times of the day. You can't do that. Reason is because there will be too many highs and lows and changes in the course of that day, which is not a direct measurement of your pH. You have to have the body kind of equilibrate. It has to be like a pendulum, right? So during the course of the night, I've been sleeping, I haven't consumed any more food, the body starts to equival, equilibrate to a set point, which is actually the balance or the average that pendulum stops moving. Now, when I've been sleeping for five, six hours, I wake up in the morning, I test my pH with the paper, and it gives me a reading, and I know where I am. What am I after? I do not want to be under 6.5. If I'm much under 6.5, that's an acidotic state. That means I'm very acid forming. When I'm acid forming, that is driving me literally. See, this is where it's a delicate interplay between the psyche, the emotions, the stress in your life, and then actually how you eat and what you consume reflects back to your psyche, your emotions, and your level of distress, and vice versa. So when I'm very acidic, you literally drive your body to more of a cortisol, stress hormone, adrenaline, I would call it catecholamine-driven state. Catecholamines are stress hormones. I feel them punching out and making my heart race sometimes. Stress, things going on, tough consults, problems, employees, radio show, live streams, yikes, getting so, a, a message ready. Sometimes I just feel like my, my heart's coming out of my chest. That, that's a cortisol, adrenaline-driven state. That's a cortisol, catecholamine-driven state. It's not a good thing for any of us. And I'm trying to do my best to balance that. I hope you are. But do you understand that when I eat poorly, and I'll get to that, what that constitutes, how that drives me to being acid-forming. And when I'm acid-forming, I begin to drive this stimulatory Cortisol breaks you down. Do you need cortisol? Absolutely. I need adequate levels. I don't need supra therapeutic levels. It breaks me down. It'll break down my musculature. It breaks down your brain. It causes you to become less restorative and reparative. And adrenaline, an adrenaline catecholamine stimulatory driven state eventually will wreak havoc, will damage your immune system, will weaken your immune system, create disease in our bodies. So, less than 6.5, not good. Acid. I'm acid forming. How did I get here? Well, um, poor food choices. So foods, and that could usually be foods that have a lot of chemicals in them, foods that are more uh, nutrient depleted. White flours, higher sugar, a lot of meat, high protein. This is why I get a little concerned with young people that work out and train that are on these high protein diets. And I know why they do it. I most certainly understand. I mean, I understand the metabolic aspects of that. To lean out and to cut the muscles, I get that. But you're, 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 you're exposing yourself. Because you're in a very acid-forming state. Now, many of us, not working out or training, but are in an acid-forming state because we eat a lot of white refined carbs, sugars. We eat a lot of dairy, and we eat a lot of meats. That's a highly acid-forming state. Okay, so it's not always just about 
package or process or this is not about even fast food. This is about the, the, the type, the categories and classes of food. I can go over 7.5. Now this is more, this is an acid forming a state up here under 6.5 of that pH. Over 7.5 is more of a catabolic state. Now this is almost as dangerous as the other because what this means is folks are eating so poorly and usually it's maybe a little more here, this higher protein, ironically, in some cases. And what they're doing is they're not getting adequate complex carbs. All right? They're eating too many refined and white carbs. You can go the other direction. And what begins to happen, the body is looking for sources. The body needs good sources of complex carbohydrates, vegetable sources, beans, legumes, lentils, um, cauliflower, broccoli, vegetable sources of fibers. And now I can start swinging more to alkaline. Now you can go up there occasionally. I don't think that's a problem. But when I drive, so when I drive on these extreme ends, see, we don't want you to be, and when you think of, maybe this is a bad terminology to alkalinize, maybe in some ways. Maybe the word is we want to neutralize. The more you think about it. So what do I mean by that? Well, I want to keep you between 6.5 and maybe 7.5. Right? So I want, a neutral, I want to keep you at a neutral pH. This is P, almost pH neutral. 7.2 or 7.3, whatever is exactly neutral. We want to keep you more pH neutral. Why? Because if I'm acidic, I'm breaking down. I, what, what really is the consequence of that? What is the consequence if I'm, let's just stick to that side. If I'm over 7, I'm, I'm catabolic, I am literally... Um, I'm, my body's in a bad way. I am looking, I'm, my body's beginning to cannibalize itself. So if I'm over 7.5 of the pH, I will begin to cannibalize myself. Seriously, you're breaking out. You know, your, your body's looking and searching literally for good sources of carbohydrates to use as energy at a cellular level. If I'm less than 6.5, highly acidic, and what's happening, especially in this state? I lose cell efficiency. I'm losing the, the ability to repair. I'm losing immune capabilities. I am losing the ability to cellularly detoxify. I mean, that, that's just a short list. I can go on. I kind of promised Josiah he has yeah. an important day today. We weren't going to overdo this today. That's so we're... Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we'll get to Betty. So if you see this, if I'm running in this acidic state, I'm eating way too much meats and proteins and I don't have enough buffering minerals to neutralize my body. And what word are those found? I'll give you the specifics. Nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables as a general theme. The whole theme, if you, what could I distill this down? If I distill this right now, right now, you say, so what are you telling me? Eat more vegetables, eat more plant foods, eat lentils, eat beans, eat legumes, eat, eat, eat fruit. You say, wait a minute, a lot of fruit, a lot of sugar, bad for you. I, I have, I'm on a yeast diet. Don't muddy the water, please. You've got to neutralize or alkalinize. Why? Because if we do not, I lose cellular efficiency. What happens there? Well, I, I can't detoxify, number one. I, I damage the mitochondria. I will damage my mitochondria. How many folks with uh, fibromyalgia today? 30 years ago, it wasn't even heard of. Chronic fatigue syndrome. Do you realize how many people are battling chronic fatigue? I have a lot of theories on this, but I, which I can't get into. That's a, Josiah, that's a, uh, that's a live stream. Chronic fatigue, it is. Chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. That's a, <laughs> at some point, well, if not, we're going to do it. So I, I can't detoxify. I damage my mitochondria. I can start to develop more chronic fatigue. Why? cellularly within that mitochondria times trillions of cells, this is where I'm making energy. If I am acidic, I can't transport 
toxins out, nutrients in. I gunk up the works at a cellular level. I lose efficiencies. I gain weight. What about food, food allergies even play into this? I'm eating a lot of foods that my body's reacting to. I'm hyper-reacting. All of these components can add up to an acidifying form of a diet. Ultimately, what's going to happen here, we begin to break down. Now, why, why would I say that? Well, you begin to break down because if I am, if, 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 first of all, if I'm in this, either this 7.5 and above, this catabolic, or 6.5 and under, highly acidic. We always focus on, I'm highly acidic. You can go the other direction, again, and it's just as dangerous. But here's the key. The key is, I am moving my body to this cortisol, you know, catecholamine, or you would know it more as adrenaline-driven state. And again, praise God, the adrenals produce cortisol, I produce some adrenaline, noradrenaline, et cetera, these catecholamines in the adrenals, I need that. That gets me, that gives me the ability to be energized to do a radio show and pop in and do this right after that. I mean, that's what we, we need that. Unfortunately, when this system is driven too hard, this will begin to literally damage cellular functioning, cellular efficiencies. And unfortunately, that's when disease state manifests. Sooner or later, it begins to happen. It's not just age or aging process, but when we're not alkaline and neutral at a, at a cellular level, we will begin to break down. So if I can get you to more of a pH neutral state, one of the things that will happen by default, your body will swing more away from this highly catabolic, breaking down, destructive state, and you're moving more to a reparative state. And what is that reparative state? Now this is where people get afraid. Oh, DHEA. I read, you know, one of those articles in the newspaper, DHEA is dangerous. Whoa. Whoa. First of all, test your DHEA levels. Do a saliva panel with us. Um, I use DHEA just about every morning. But what I want to also be able to do is to help my body produce it naturally. And how I eat and what's happening at a cellular level will dictate that. So I want to be in a DHEA, not in a catecholamine and cortisol, I want to be in a DHEA, uh-oh, watch this, serotonin-driven state. See, when I'm assuming and consuming adequate good types of carbs and yams and sweet potatoes and some lentils and lentil soup and a big mixed green salad with a piece of fish with some salmon, that's what I had yesterday for lunch. I mean, when we're eating that way, and the smoothie that I had this morning that had blackberries and blueberries and some plant-based protein and so on. When I'm eating this way, I'm helping my body swing to more of a DHEA serotonin producing. See, one of these two guys will predominate. Let me draw a line right through here. That's not a good line. Okay, one of these two guys will predominate. High stress in my life, I'm under high demand, I don't sleep well, I go to bed late, I eat an acid-forming diet, I eat a lot of protein, a lot of meat, a lot of white flours, and I eat too much sugar, I don't, I hate vegetables, I don't eat fruits. Not only maybe could I be under high stress emotionally with work, life, job, children, finance, but now the way I'm eating is driving me to this. Now remember, this is a catabolic state, right? This is a breakdown state. And what I want to be able to do, even through my diet, so now this is where the spirit man and what you consume, this is where they converge and they begin to intersect. You help yourself bi-directionally. So now if I begin to change my diet and I begin to eat a diet that's more alkaline for me and I neutralize my pH, I allow my body to start swinging to more of an anabolic, what's anabolic means? In favor of building, repairing, restoring. This is a catabolic state. High cortisol, high adrenaline, high catecholamines, boom, I'm breaking the body down. So you need to be able, certainly, and I'll give you some pointers on that, but I want to be able to swing this. Now how else can I help this? And then I'm going to get to 
the mm -hmm. diet specifics because I'm not going to get crazy on this. I mean, I could go on, obviously, I can go on a long time about anything, but I can go on a long time about this because there's a lot to this. Food allergies, food intolerances, chemicals, yoy, how chemicals, the more chemicals I'm exposed to will toxify the cell and encourage this. I don't want to get off onto too many different trails today. I'm going to send you a clear, strong message as to why you and your family need to consume more fruits and vegetables and why you need to do it, not because I'm a vegan or a vegetarian. I'm not even going to go there. And if you are, I'm not, I don't want to offend you. It's not the point. The point is I need buffering minerals in my diet. These buffering minerals will neutralize my pH. If you do not, your body will pull them from storage. Where is storage? Your bones, your connective tissue, ligaments, muscles. You'll pull them. You know why? Because your your, 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 your blood, and, and really your serum, I mean, but, it, but really what's flow, let's just say what's flowing through your veins, your body will do anything it possibly can to neutralize that pH and keep it perfectly buffered. 7.2, 7.3, your body will, will do anything it can. Well, what does that mean, anything it can? It's going to pull minerals from reserves to get into your circulatory system to manage that pH. And I'll, I can't remember exactly what is 7.35 or whatever. That, that's right. 7.3 or something is 7.35 is is what you want your blood to be at a pH level. Why? Well, because your arteries will burn up. Your lifeblood will you literally consume you. You'll you'll explode. So what are you saying? What are you saying? See, at a at a tissue level, you can be highly acidic and be breaking down. But your body will call out all stops to draw the minerals into the circulatory system so that you don't collapse your circulatory system, your lifeblood. But when this happens, you, can, you become even more acidotic, more catabolic. You're driving more cortisol, adrenaline components, and that's going to be stimulatory. That's going to break you down. All right? I think I covered what I wanted to cover here. I don't believe I wanted to do any more here. All right, so let, let's just go over to what I think are some key components to, to begin to alkalinize your diet. Let, let's just think about it. I, I'm, I'm not to say this, but most fruits, most fruits, lemons, make, 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 make some fresh, fresh squeezed lemon juice in the morning. That'll help to alkalinize you. Eat some pineapples. I know it has a lot of sugar. If you're a diabetic, maybe you cut back. Make some smoothies that have fresh fruits or frozen fruits, preferably organic. Make some green drinks. Don't be afraid to make a green drink and throw an apple in there to sweeten it up a little bit. Make a fresh fruit compost. Make a fruit salad. Get more fruits in. Why? Because generically speaking, they're alkaline forming. Now, I, I'm without even hearing the question, I know that's something that's going through some of your minds. There are some fruits like citrus fruits. You just said it, Joe, lemon and lime. They're acid. They're acid. Gotcha. They're, they're, they're acid. They are. Okay, by nature. But as a, as a residue, and what I mean by that, at the end of what happens when it reacts in your body, when your body's chemistry takes place, when you start exchanging these hydrogen ions and the minerals, literally the end result is to leave a more alkaline ash residue. So believe it or not, it can start out as highly acidic as citrus fruit, fruit but the residue or the end result is that it alkalinizes your system. Generically speaking, I'm not even going to split hairs because I have, and many of you can even find this, and I don't know if we have it on our website or not yet, but we'll have to, you know, an alkaline forming chart. So you can look at this and you can see, okay, well, certain fruits and certain fruits that'll be over here, 
they're more alkaline forming. Oh, lentils, lentil soup, I always tell, look, look at lime, it's, but it's very acidic. Citrus is alkaline forming. What's acid forming? Beer, sugar, cocoa, ice cream, beef. I mean, you know, there's some nuts in here too, but you know, there's, there's reason why. Aspartame, soy-based products. So there are certain foods that are very acid forming. But here's the key on balance. How do I begin to restore? How do I begin the process of restoration and changing my body? You've got to begin to eat more fruits because of the alkalinization. You've got to eat more veggies. You have to. Colors, they're loaded with minerals. It'll begin to alkalinize you. Make sure you have, you know, a mixed green salad at dinner. And for your lunch, have a piece of salmon or some tuna or some chicken breast on there. And again, I'm not splitting hairs. I'm not getting into just, this is principle, how it'll help you. I'm not getting into the specifics of this. Next, you've got to eat raw nuts and seeds. Even though some of them are a little acid forming, See, I have an ulterior motive. Many of them are rich in minerals, and I can get you more over net, net to an alkaline side if I can get you, excuse me, away from eating bad sources of snacks. So eat some almonds, eat some walnuts because of their mineral content. Vegetables, fruits, here's your next bet why you need to consume fibers because then you'll help to mobilize those toxins and drink plenty of water. Water will help to move a lot of the toxins. It doesn't alkalinize you. You can get alkaline kangen forming water units. You can do that. I'm okay with that, but they're expensive. The technology to do that correctly with filtration, purification, alkalinization is expensive. But they work. They're real. It's Japanese technology from 20 years ago. It works. The keys. Acid is catabolic. It'll break you down. An acid-forming diet. A diet that's on the other end, too alkaline, is bad. The body's searching for good sources of carbohydrates. What are you, what's your body going to do? It'll start consuming, you're going to cannibalize yourself. We want to move you into that neutral pH range, 6.5 to 7.5. How do I get there? I've got to start reducing the number of chemicals I'm exposed to, junk that I'm exposed to. How do I alkalinize and neutralize? It's got to come through minerals, magnesium, calcium, not always my favorite mineral, but we need it. Selenium, potassium, zinc. These are minerals that they're plus charges. They will alkalinize your system and they'll come predominant. Can you get them through supplementation? Well, of course you can. Why am I so big on buffered vitamin C? Because it's non-acidic. And when you do enough buffered vitamin C, especially in a powdered form, because we use so many different minerals in there, you can start to help to alkalinize your system. And what am I doing? When I do that, I'm enhancing, what am I doing? I'm enhancing repair. I'm enhancing detoxification. I'm enhancing the body's ability to raise energy supply at a cellular level because that's where you make your energy in the mitochondria. So I'm, I'm enhancing my repair mechanisms. I'm enhancing my detoxification. I'm enhancing energy. Indirectly, you are stimulating your immune response because when repair goes into deficit, you're damaging your immune system. And then ultimately and lastly, and we're going to close with this, remember, when my diet is highly acidic or on the other specs, end of the spectrum, highly catabolic as opposed to that more tight range, I might be on some extreme diet. That's damaging to me. What I'm doing is, remember... I'm running in a cortisol, adrenaline, or predominant state, which is catabolic, immune damaging, muscle damaging, breakdown state. 
and we want to transfer you more to a DHEA. Now you can just take DHEA and precursors to serotonin, but follow the rationale. When I change my diet and I promote a repair and an energy producing and immune stimulating by eating a more alkaline forming diet, I shift my body away from this cortisol, adrenaline, catecholamine breakdown state and I shift it to more of a DHEA. What's serotonin? A feel good hormone. You change your diet, you feel better. Not just because you're alkalinizing, <clears throat> but you're encouraging the manufacturer of these two guys. This is a neurotransmitter, a brain hormone. This is a hormone, literally, that you produce from your adrenals. When I make adequate levels, this and also stimulates repair, stimulates energy, stimulates the immune system. Do you see how it all ties together? Alkalinize your system, the importance of alkalinizing your diet. Betty writes, please talk about the benefits of alkaline water. Options to obtain it, purchase in a store, homemade, systems, costs, benefits of. Betty, will it help with any weight loss? Is it good for diabetics? Um, specifically for diabetics, I don't know. I'd say anytime a diabetic can alkalinize, that'd be good because uh, many times diabetics are in this cortisol, catecholamine, adrenaline dominant state. So I would say to you that yes, it can be beneficial for diabetics. Benefits of alkaline water, no question. I'm, I'm all for it. I don't personally do it because I have water purifiers. I, I think the big problem that I had with those units for years, and, I, and I'm probably wrong because now the technology I'm sure has even improved, was their ability to adequately purify the water. I never doubted their ability to alkalinize the water. Good units will absolutely alkalinize because what they do is they use cathode, anode, they positively, negatively charge. What they do is they pull out all the metals and minerals and then at the end they add back in the good minerals. So that alkalinizes. So that's a good thing. So um, homemade systems, I don't know about homemade systems. Costs, the one I know of, and there are others I'm sure, the Kangen units, it's a Japanese manufactured originally anyway, product. Yes, benefits, expensive, I think worth it. Um, will it help with any weight loss? I think there's a lot of other things that play into weight loss, but indirectly, yes. Yeah, indirectly, yes. Is that good? Any other questions? God bless you guys. Thanks for being with us. Let me read you quickly and encourage you. We didn't do any breaks today. We just ran right through that. Um, a couple of quick thoughts. What we learned from the life of Eliezer. Let me, I, I don't have time to read you the whole thing. But here's the takeaway message. This comes from chapter 24, verses 3, 5, 9, 12 through 14, and verse 21. And if you read through that carefully, I'm going <clears> to <throat> just read you the end here. And it says, The man bowed down. He worshiped the Lord. Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abram, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. And as for me, the Lord has led me. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. Oh, that we can get to the place that we could say, as Eleazar said, as for me, the Lord has led me. I think it comes from a daily walk with him, a daily walk of submission. We think we're right. We believe we're right. We get prideful. We get arrogant. We get whatever. But learning to submit to him and submit to his will. Here's the key messages that come out of this. If you'll just go back and read through chapter 24, here's what you can pick out of there. Number one, Eliezer was willing to accept the challenge from Abraham and literally from God. <clears throat> he accepted the challenge and the difficulties that lied ahead of what he was asked to do. Number two, he specifically asked Abraham, what if she doesn't do this? What if I don't find? He examined the alternatives. He wasn't afraid to ask. Number three, he followed the instructions of the plan. You'll see that he never deviates from what he commits and promises Abraham he'll do. Don't deviate from your plan. He submitted the plan to God. He literally lays it out before God. If this is the woman, when I go here, Lord, I pray that you'll in essence open this door. He lays it out last, or not lastly, but next. He prays specifically for guidance. He goes to God with the plan. He has the plan, but he gave God, 
I said here wiggle room. He gives him the steering wheel. God, if it's not here, you lead me or you direct me. Lastly, we see that he waits on God as the plan unfolds and sometimes waiting. It says, without saying a word, Eleazar, the man, I put that in there, Eleazar, he watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. Without saying a word, he watches her closely. He was willing to wait and observe. And lastly, as he says, as for me on the way, the Lord has led me. I pray God leads you. I pray he's ordering your steps. But let's learn from the life of Eleazar that you can be engaged in the plan. It has to be of him. Give God wiggle room. Ask God for direction all along the way. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. Who knows what the next topic will be. I'm sure we'll come up with one. Lord willing, we'll be here next time. Open house is at the end of this month. So make sure we'll have, you know, we'll always have stuff going on for the open house. Tune in and uh, hey, God bless you, man. Tell someone else, turn to somebody else on to the live streams. I think they'll be blessed by it. Thanks for being with us today. You have a great afternoon.